Last repair for the day, we're going to be working on the Gigabyte 3080 Ti that came in for no power. Let's read what the customer wrote. Was working when screen went black and slight burn smell. PC one boot with GPU plugged in. I checked it. I think one of the MOSFET is shorted. I marked it in white. I did not attempt any repairs. I do not know how the customer figured out which MOSFET is shortened to ground unless there's a burn mark on the board. I do see the white mark the customer is talking about right here. And let's take a look. So the customer is talking about this MOSFET right here. And I do see a burn mark right on the top, right here. The board is nice and crispy, like fried chicken. And we do not know the extent of the damage under this MOSFET, but rest of the MOSFETs or DR MOS chips, they look good. Right now we cannot go by what the customer tells us and we cannot go by this mark. So we have to do our own investigation. If the video card is plugged in and the computer is not powering up because the card is plugged in, it's very likely a short on the 12 volt line. And a short on the 12 volt line is likely a shorted MOSFET. So what I'm going to do is measure the 12 volt lines at the coil here, one here and one here, and see if we have a short circuit meter in diode mode and we're going to measure coil number one and we don't have a short we have a reading of 0 0.46 and if we read coil number two look at this we have a short circuit so we do have a short circuit on one of the dr mos chips and it's very likely the mosfet the customer labeled in white is the bad one but how can we tell what we're going to do is inject voltage at the shorted coil either ends either on the right or left. And we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot on the board. We're going to be using the NF.short voltage injection tool. And we've been out of this tool since COVID hit due to chip shortage. We've been after the factory since. I email them every two weeks. Can we get it now? 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 And every time it's a no. And it's still a no. They still do not manufacture this voltage injection tool but they said that they have enough chips for 200 pieces. I told them, I'll take whatever you have. And we have 200 pieces in stock right now. The tool comes in a box like this, and have that short, Northridge Fix Voltage Injection Tool. And let me do a quick unboxing for this tool because we're gonna use it for this repair. I should do the unboxing here and not hide it from you. So the tool comes like this, the probes, and I'll go over the probes, the power cable, and right there. Now, what's special about this tool is you have control over both volts and amps using this one button. Click on the button, and you can set the dials for your voltage. Click on that button again, and you can set your maximum current. For voltage, you can go from 0 0.6 volts all the way up to 21 volts. And for current, when you click again, you can go from 0 0.5 amps all the way up to 21 amps, but you never want to inject 20 volts onto a motherboard, onto a GPU, onto a laptop, or any consumer electronics, and you never want to go up to 21 amps. Anytime you want to inject voltage to a video card, to a laptop, or any consumer electronics, you inject one volt, three amps max, and you monitor the board under a thermal camera. In our case, we have a short circuit at the inductor right here. So I'm going to inject voltage at either side of the inductor, and I'm gonna monitor the board under a thermal camera. Let's say I'm not seeing any heat spots. I do not know where the short is coming from. And the device is using three amps. Then maybe it's time to increase my maximum amps. I go up to four or five amps, and I monitor the board under a thermal camera again. I do not see any heat spots. Now it's time to increase voltage. I go up to 1.2 volts at four amps or five amps. I do not see heat spot. I go up to 1.5 volts. And I may go up to 1.7, 1.8 volts. I do not recommend it. But if you know what you're doing, you can even go up to 2 volts or 2.2 volts. But you start with 1 volt, 3 amps. You never want to inject 3 volts onto this board or 5 volts or 10 volts because you're going to end up frying the GPU. 
And if you are working on the laptop, you may fry the CPU, your PCH, your NAND, whatever the case may be. In most cases, I would say 80%, 90% of cases, one volt is sufficient to be able to detect heat spots on the board. Now, one question you may be asking yourself is, why does this tool support up to 21 volts and 21 amps if we're only going to use one volt to inject voltage or two volts to inject voltage? Like I said, you do not want to inject more than one or two volts to any specific motherboard. You start with one volt and then you increase slightly until you are able to see a heat spot. Why does it support 20 volts or 21 volts if we're only going to use one volt? The answer is because this tool can be used as a power supply. Let's say I want to power up a 12 volt device. I do not have the charger for that device. I do not have a battery for that device. I can set this tool at 12 volts and then I can inject voltage. It can be used as a power supply. The whole power supply here is a heat sink, the whole thing. If you take a closer look, the whole power supply is a heat sink. So this voltage injection tool can handle a short. Another thing is a lot of power supplies will not even allow you to inject voltage when a short circuit is detected and they go into protection mode to prevent damage to the unit. Like what happened here. I injected voltage using the third channel and now the third channel does not work. Or it does work, but if I have the power supply set at 5 volts, the power supply, the third channel will output something like 0.5 volts or 0.9 volts or 0.7 volts. And now I'm not able to use channel number 3 because I injected voltage onto a short circuit. And that is the reason for this short circuit voltage injection tool. Like I said, the whole tool is a heat sink. The tool is made to handle the load. This tool is one of the best short circuit voltage injection tools in the market. I have used a lot, a lot of different models. I have tried a lot. And what's special about this one here is you have full control over volts and amps. Whereas all the ones I have used in the past and all the ones that we sold on our site in the past, you only have control over voltage. While that may be fine, for most cases, you only set your voltage and then you let the motherboard draw as many amps as it needs. As long as you have your volts set to low, something like 0.8 volts, 1 volt, 1.2 volts, you should be okay. But with this one here, you have full control over volts and amps. And that's what makes this tool special. Let's go ahead and power up this unit and see how it works. We're going to plug the power cable and we're going to turn the unit on. Let's see if we can focus here. Right now I have the voltage injection tool set to 1.6 volts at 0 0.8 amps. If I want to change voltage, I press on the button and then I can dial my voltage up or I can dial the voltage down. If I press on that button again, now I have control over amps. I can go up on amps or go down. And if I press the button again, I can set the controller to beep or not to beep. Like now, I set it to beep. So if I press to change my voltage, now every time I turn that dial, it beeps to indicate that voltage is increasing or decreasing. Now, I have this voltage injection tool set at 1.7 volts and 0 0.6 amps. I want to go to 1.2 volts. Maybe we can start with 1.2 volts. I do not know if you can see the display. And click on the button to set my amps, maximum amps. Let's set maximum amp draw to 4.8. Okay, click on the button again. Right there. So I have the voltage injection tool set to 1.2 volts and 4.8 amps max. Now this voltage injection tool comes with a set of probes. Let me go over the probes quick. We have the ground probe and the ground probe is banana to alligator. So we plug a ground probe right here and I can clamp this ground probe to any ground point on this board, whether it's a screw hole or the top right here. Done. And as for the red probe, it's a needle. So plug it right here. And now I'm able to inject voltage at either side of the coil where I have the short. Now, if you feel that the probe is too short, you can always use your multimeter probe. If you want something longer, 
you can use your multimeter probe. Plug it in right here. And now I can inject voltage using my long multimeter probe right here. All right. So let's go ahead and inject voltage at the coil. And we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. And we want to see if the customer is right about that shorted MOSFET, the one he labeled. The thermal camera is turning on. It will take a few seconds. And one thing I can tell you is I do hear the fan on this voltage injection tool. The fan is not quiet and it's not loud either. It's normal for a powerful device like this. The thermal camera is on right now. Let's switch to the thermal camera mode. And we're going to inject 1.3 volts onto the short. Now, the MOSFET the user has marked is right over here. So look out for this area. One, two, and three. Okay, so right now the power supply is drawing about 1.4 amps. We have it set at 4.2 amps max, but it's drawing 1.2 amps and I'm not able to see the heat spot, or I am, right there, right there. Look, let me remove the probe. Heat spot disappears. And if I put that probe again, right there. Take out the probe. The heat spot is gone. Put the probe again. And now we see the heat spot. Now I can increase voltage slightly. Maybe I can go up to 1.4 volts and try again. And we should be able to see that heat spot more. Let's try 1.4 volts. And try again. One, two, and three. See? Right there. Remove the probe. Heat is gone. Put the probe back. And you see it right over here. All right? We got it. So the customer was right. The one that he marked is the one that has the short circuit. We're going to go ahead and desolder that chip. And we'll test again for a short. Right now, we have to be careful because this DR MOS is in between aluminum capacitors. If we apply heat onto those caps, the caps are going to pop. I demonstrated this once in the past where that cap popped. We can use this shield I removed from an iPad, a metal shield. And then I can put this over it. We do not need all that protection, but I have them right next to me, so why not? Let's go ahead and desolder this DR MOS. Hopefully the chip is not fused to that board because of that burn. When the burn is nasty, the chip will glue itself to the layer of the board. So the only way to remove the chip would be to rip off the top layer. I've seen a lot worse, so I don't think that this will be a problem. Now the board is very thick, I do not know how many layers, maybe 10-12 layers. And the only way we're going to be able to desolder this chip is when the board gets saturated with heat and the board itself reaches the melting temperature of solder, that's when we will be able to remove the chip. Solder is almost liquid. But I see the chip is stuck from the right side. Yeah, I think the chip may have fused itself to the board. I'm not able to remove that chip even though we do see the pins are liquefied from the bottom, left and top, but not from the top right. chip is stuck from the very top.
Yeah, that's one nasty short circuit. And we're out. Well, look at the damage under the chip. Let's go ahead and measure for a short circuit and see if we still have a short. Meter in diet mode. And do we still have a short? And the answer is no. Awesome. We are reading 0 0.4 voltage drop in diet mode. And we do not have a short. And if we test the other 12 volt line, we are reading 0. 36. Awesome. So the short is gone. We were able to pinpoint and remove the short. And the customer was correct about marking that the RMOS, which is nice. Now we do have that chip in stock, but it's not readily available on my bench right now. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the chip from a donor board. This one has the BL and now we have a problem. I do not have that chip. This chip was the AL. Oh, oh, I have the BL one and not the AL. I do not know if I can grab one from a donor board right now. I do have some donor boards right next to me. Can we get it from here? This one is the BL, it's not the AL, so we cannot use this one. I do not have that chip readily available next to me. So I'm gonna put the card on the side until I'm able to get my hands on that chip then we can solder it and test. But regardless, we were able to get rid of the short. All we have to do is replace the chip. Whether the card works or not, we are done. There's nothing more I can do. We're gonna end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.